My name is Tommy Jessup and I'm an award-winning actor. Line of Duty. I campaign to improve the rights of people with disabilities. We are not all the same, but we um, all do have hopes and dreams. I want to know why people with a learning disability are more than twice as likely to die from a avoidable causes than the rest of the population. She didn't deserve the treatment she got. And how some Hospitals fail to care properly for people like me. I'm absolutely heartbroken that they treated Robert like that. People with disabilities have the right to be treated as a person. You. Mum, get us on camera. <laughs> people with a learning disability are not all the same. Just like anyone else, we have talents and there are times where we need help. Do you want to go through this again? Mm -hmm. I'm lucky I live a very full life. I've had good treatment from the NHS, but that's not always the case for other people like me. Uh, Hi there, what can I get you? A um, lemonade, lemonade with no ice. No ice? No. And a uh, Jack Daniels and a Coke. No problem. Brendan is a fellow campaigner. That's uh, so what kind of things frustrates you? I know that you wouldn't be always a drug. You my cubicle on my mum, on my You go, how can you, uh, I, my mum, or my cubicle, what is wrong with Brendan? It's me, who is she? You know me? Can actually, people, um, really are getting, um, late building life. If you give me some, you will get numb. Let's go put that. I'm meeting someone with direct experience of poor care. Lisa's niece, Chloe, died in hospital in 2019. She had a serious muscle condition and a learning disability. Would you like to have a look at a little video of her singing? So she's got her favourite socks on here. All right, babes, off you go. So. She makes me laugh, she wouldn't stop singing. Oh, 
In February, Chloe went to see her consultant and my mum had told him that, um, you know, she hadn't had a bowel movement. He raised blood tests for Chloe and he never checked her results and that's where she fell through. It was really only until late April and I got this call from my mum who was hysterical and she said, you have to come now, Chloe's very, very sick. Chloe became more unwell and was rushed to Queen's Hospital in Romford. A scan revealed possible signs of a cancer. She was um, agitated and was becoming in pain. Chloe couldn't articulate how she felt or what was happening with her body, even to us. And then they administered morphine. The crash team come in and uh, everyone, my mother was hysterical, we got her into a room. They worked on Chloe for about 20 minutes and she survived that. Chloe was moved to a general ward. A formal handover didn't take place. The learning Disability team was not involved in her care there. She wasn't on any support whatsoever. She was slightly sitting up and she was coughing. And when the nurse came down, I asked if she knew that Chloe had special needs, to which she looked down at the paper and said, I do now. So I thought, that's a great start. I said to her, she's coughing. And she said, she's fine. You do what you need to do you can come back in the morning. And this is the thing I will never forgive myself for. I looked at her, I said, Chloe, I'll be back in the morning. And the last thing, she was just, I kissed her and I told her I loved her. And she just, she went like that and I walked out. That same night, Lisa had a call from the hospital. We literally walked into Chloe's room and there was a young female registrar and she was vis visibly upset and she said, I declare Chloe dead at 1.53. I was just stunned. I was in shock. I couldn't believe it. And that was that. Chloe was only 27 when she died. Chloe used to come here. This is uh, Chloe's drama class. Hello, Hi, Tommy. Nice to meet you. Chloe's drama group planted a rose bush in her memory. I've got buds on there. Uh, they are not come out just yet. Do you like singing, Tommy? Uh, yeah. Do you? Mm-hmm. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up And that is an honour of Chloe. In honour of Chloe. Oh, thank you. It's so beautiful. I would like to meet some Chloe in person. We've got many things in common with Chloe, because even I quite like the, um, um, the um, attention. Yeah. Um, we get Chloe um, did. We really would have a uh, laugh to, together.
this has always been good to me. Have you got any problems swallowing food? Uh, no. no. But treating people with a learning disability needs more time and expertise. That's a very good blood pressure. I think you've been keeping fit and well, haven't you? This can be a challenge in busy hospitals. I've come to the library with my director, Imogen, to look into cases where an inquest took place. If the coroner discovers anything that needs to change to prevent people dying in similar circumstances, then they write a report called a Prevention of Future Deaths report. Can we see there's a report? I've actually got every single report that's been published since 2013. We can find all of the cases where it was somebody who also had a learning disability. Um, and we can find out which hospitals they were treated at and, and what went wrong. One hospital stood out connected to four deaths. I'm going to look into two of them. See the rhododendron coming out now, Tommy? Uh, yeah, yeah. This was Julie when she was about six or seven. Oh, OK. Oh. And that was her mum and dad. Yeah, yep. I think they were going to a, uh, a wedding. Mm. Oh, perfect. Yes. She liked to be the life and soul of the party, centre of attention. She loved it. Against all the odds, she enjoyed many years of happiness. In August 2018, Julie was taken to Stepping Hill Hospital in Stockport. She had stopped eating and drinking and lost nearly three stone. visitor I found her soiled and her bed wasn't changed she had uh, dry vomit on her hair she wasn't being cared for one Saturday I was called in late at night to say that Julie um, was very poorly she's got a rash and one of the junior doctors thought the rash was a medication it wasn't a medication rash it was chicken pox To fight the chicken pox, she died a few days after catching it. She used to make pottery. This is a little house that she made. Oh, and uh, a little tree outside and a bench. How brilliant. Nice, isn't it? Yes. I think she was a nuisance to them. You know, they just haven't got the facilities or the trained staff to deal with people with learning disabilities. And that's evident. She didn't 
deserve the treatment she got. I wished I'd pushed harder. I really do. But I didn't. And uh, I've got to live with that. Thank you for uh, sharing uh, the story with us. What did happen to Julie really isn't fair at all. No, it wasn't fair, Tommy. And no matter how big the organisation, no matter how powerful they are, they've got to follow the rules. Then is it okay if I just stick it in the inside of your shirt for you? Um, yep. Cat McIntosh cared for Julie before she went into hospital. And what kind of issues did Julie's hospital face? At that time, they didn't have a, a learning disability liaison nurse to give that expertise and to help all the other staff in the hospital understand how to best meet the needs of somebody with a learning disability. There was lots of saying that they couldn't do tests. There was an issue of her not being suitable, I think was the phrase that was used. And it felt to me as though people weren't prepared to make the effort or show her the, the same level of care that we would if maybe she didn't have the diagnosis and the labels. She shouldn't have died at 58 of chicken pox in hospital. I think Julie did experience discrimination in her health care. spoke to another family about Stepping Hill Hospital. Since her left the bedroom, it's still the same. Yeah, she loved her clothes. Julie Barrow lived with her parents. Yeah, we used to call her the one between because she was always <laughs> sat between us. <laughs> so. In 2018, Julie was taken to Stepping Hill for a routine procedure, but it was cancelled. Poor Julie was pretty devastated by it. There was a clear lack of... Understanding. Of... They didn't seem to take it on board mm. that Julie needed a lot of support. I just felt that Julie was invisible. Her personality just changed. She wasn't the happy Julie that she was when she went into hospital. And she never really got back to that happy place. Come on, let's have a hug. Julie's parents filmed her at home to show Doctors, how she had changed. Night times, we used to have turns, you'd have to go into her. We'd have to sleep with her and, because uh, she was so distressed. Awful, awful. She'd, she'd been pushed beyond her limits, Julie. The 
heavy medication made her tumble on the stairs. I was upstairs when I heard the fall. Mm. It was just one bang and, and she uh, fell forward. She pitched forward onto, onto her, her head. Very quickly they transferred her to Salford Royal. But sadly, um, it was futile to do anything, apparently. Julie dies of a brain injury at 56. It really breaks my heart to talk about Stepping Hill like this because I worked there for many years. Her experience in hospital contributed to her passing. We both feel that, don't we? Yes. It's very apparent that things do need to change. to meet. They say they had to fight to get life-saving treatment for their son. Hey, set yourself up then. Big, big bear. Big, big bear. Sharon's son, Robert, has a genetic disorder and a learning disability. I'll tell you what I think we should do. There's a cat outside that you would like to meet, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, go and open the door. Now oh, she might come in the house. Come oh, in. There you go, she's coming. <sighs> this is Shelley. Ah, oh, Shelley. <laughs> yeah. What are Robert's favourite things to uh, do? He likes to play with the football. He also likes buses. No, he likes silly banter. Yes. Makes him laugh. <laughs> Two years ago, Robert went to hospital with testicular cancer. The tumour was removed, but the cancer had spread. Typical treatment required up to 72 hours of chemotherapy. It was just absolutely impossible to give him this 72 hour chemo. Robert could not sit for such invasive things to be done to him at all. I was a little bit panicky but I didn't think too much of it because I thought that they would go away and they would explore other types of chemo that he could possibly have. At first, the hospital didn't do this. They said Robert would have to go into end-of-life care. That's when the head dropped. And they kept saying that there was nothing that they could give him. I had my hand out, I was pleading, I was saying, please help him. <laughs> I was being told to calm down. I've never been so angry in all my life, and I still am now. Sharon refused to give up on her son. She got a lawyer and a second opinion. Another meeting was held with the hospital. 
They then proceeded to tell me that there was a chemotherapy that Robert could have. And I just thought myself, three weeks ago, you're telling me you can't do nothing. Three weeks ago, you're telling me my son's going to die. Now you're coming up with treatment? Is it because I've kicked up a fuss? Is it because I've got a solicitor involved? You're dealing with people's lives. Robert has now made a full recovery from cancer. How um, do you feel about what happened? I'm absolutely heartbroken that they treated Robert like that. I still don't understand why. People with disabilities have the right to be treated as a person. Disability want to be heard, and we say we should be treated like everyone else. Hopefully, people will listen to us, understand us and really talk to us so that we truly um, do have a voice. Explore the wider challenges that people with a learning disability face in society and how this impacts on their health go to bbc.co.uk forward slash panorama and follow the links to the Open University. Mm -hmm.